the final instructional video on the get up progression. We're going all the way to the stand, all the way back down. Everything that we've done up to this point, again, one skill layered on top of another, layered on top of another, layered on top of another, should have done a great job of preparing us for this. If you're getting up all the way in your training, it's because you've made the decision that you want to do the full get up, that you have a great shoulder stability, um, and uh, that you have the balance uh, to perform this last phase with some great lower body strength uh, as well. In the FMS, one of the screens that I take you through is the inline lunge. Uh, if you've made it this far in the getup, whatever you scored on the inline lunge in your initial screen, I guarantee you it's a two or a three by the time you get uh, to this point in the getup because you simply have to have the strength in the glutes to keep everything vertical while you're performing the launch. Um, all the stages that we've gone through thus far, the roll and setup, the floor press, the get up to elbow, the get up to tall sit, the get up to the sweep, either with the bridge or the low sweep, um, this should all be autopilot by the time you get to this phase so that you really can go through those things almost mindlessly which is insane considering how much there is to each of those individual steps. Those can be broken down further and further, as you can see by the videos. But once you get that autopilot and you know your get up all the way up to the sweep, the last stage uh, should be able to be practiced safely and without undue fatigue uh, resulting. Uh, one of the things that is taught at the Strong First certifications that I tend not to teach at Salem Kettlebell Training is an unweighted getup, um, or what used to be called the naked getup. Uh, the idea of going through the Turkish getup without a weight, with the exception of a handful of students, I really want you to get the idea that you're loaded during this movement. And it's not because I want you to be super tough or anything. It's because if we load the movement, in a lot of cases, you're going to be doing it more correctly. Um, there are exceptions, like I said, uh, but for the most part, if you can do a floor press, you can do the phases of the get up uh, as your body is able and ready to do so with a weight, there's no reason for us to do it unweighted in training. In the certifications, we want instructors to be prepared to teach each phase of the Turkish getup. So in a three-day weekend, even though we spend a lot of time on the getup, some of the instructors just aren't ready to perform that with a weight by the time they're done with that certification. It doesn't mean that they're incapable of teaching their students how to do so, because they can go through it without a weight and show those positions. Okay. Uh, it's just my preference to load the movement right away uh, for self-correcting purposes. So to get up to the stand. I'm going to show two options uh, once we transition out of the sweep into our lunge position. Uh, two options as to how to get to that lunge position. But there is an interesting reappearance of an old friend of ours along this progression, uh, the hip hinge. Watch for it. Crush the grip. Stack. Pack the shoulders. Big belly breath. Roll as one. Set the leg, set the free hand, set the working leg, big belly breath and arch, trigger and press, grab the post, push, pull, and turn, up to the elbow, corkscrew the hand into the floor and be lifted, up to the tall sit position, 
Either high bridge or bend the leg and sweep through. And now, I'm going to just change my position a little bit here. Here's our old friend, the hip hinge. Press the hips back towards the heel so that I'm now off of this hand. Here, a lot of my weight is on this hand. Here, my weight is off this hand. And I can simply sit up. Now, I've got two options. I can either windshield wiper with my back foot to get into my lunge position, or I can bring my front foot around and get into my lunge position. Now, I'm going to take a big belly breath, and I'm going to use the trigger to the lunge, too. Then I'll reverse the phases, step back, land softly, swivel, hip hinge, and now I'm going to use this hand tracing down my leg to find my position for my sweep back through. Break down to the elbow, push off the post with that reverse crunch. Lower the elbow, cover, roll, unstack, drag it around, and I'm ready to go on the other side. Grip, stack and pack, big belly breath, roll as one, set the leg, set the free hand, set the bent leg, big belly breath and arch, Trigger and floor press. Grab the post, push, pull, and turn. Corkscrew the hand and be lifted up to the tall set. Bring the leg in for a low sweep, or you can do a high bridge here as well. Hip hinge to get off of this hand. And come up, swivel the front foot or the back foot, your choice. Big belly breath, trigger, and reverse. Big step back, softly bring the knee to the deck, swivel, hinge, trace the hand out to find that position, sweep back through to the tall sit. Break down to the elbow, push off the post, down, cover, roll, unstack, drag around. And that's my get up all the way through. Hopefully the verbal instructions are clear there. Um, in the reverse lunge, a lot of folks don't take a very big step before lowering to the deck. What happens there is that front heel will come off the ground. So if I only take a short step back, when I lunge down, my front heel might end up lifting. And you can see I kind of plopped down to the deck here. If you only take a short step back, Take a little step forward too. Or it doesn't even have to be a step back. It can be a sweep back, a drag, so that you feel more stable as you're getting into this position. Regardless of how you get back there, when you step back out of your standing position, keep some width between the feet. What you don't want to do is step back onto a tightrope because now my balance is even worse. Here, I'm already challenged. But I'm stable enough to come down and land softly before I swivel and go back through the movement. Um, a couple of things that we haven't talked about in the get up yet. Uh, one is timing. On the way up, 
I like to make the movements very staccato, sort of into position, big breath, into position, big breath, into position. On the way down, I like to make the transitions a little bit smoother and a little bit softer. And this is for the reason that gravity is acting a little bit differently on the bell when we're on the way up versus on the way down. Uh, on the way up, we're imagining being sort of lifted up as we go along. We're actually in a, pre in a, a little bit better position to control the weight if we perform aggressive movements. On the way down, fatigue has started to set in a little bit and any sudden jarring movements on the way down where you impact the floor hard are gonna result in that weight jarring as well. And it might move you out of that stacked position enough that you can no longer maintain your locked joints and stabilize the bell. Uh, on the way up, we're fresh, we're ready to go. We've got that locked uh, position, even if we do move a little hastily between stages. Um, another thing we haven't talked about just yet is focus. Up until we're here, I've got my eye, at least my peripheral vision, on the kettlebell. Once I hinge and start to come up into my lunge, however I get into that lunge, I'm now taking my focus off of the bell. What happens if I keep my focus on the bell? Two things. One, I get into this hyperextension where my low back is really arched, uh, even more than it normally is. Two, this is a lot harder to balance in than this. I've got a lot more contact with the floor up to this point. I don't have to worry about my balance too much. What I have to worry about is the bell not falling on my face. But once I'm here, I'm just gonna, I have, a simple task, simply lunge. I'm gonna be in a better position to do that if I keep my focus forward. Um, there are a lot of specialized variety exercises for the get up. You can press at various positions in the get up. You can do it bottoms up, you can do it with the palm. But my favorites are just to do parts of the get up. So what's your struggle? Is your struggle with the sweep? Well, maybe we do one get up up to the tall sit, and then once you're there, perform three to five sweeps before you come back down. Just get used to that performance uh, of the exercise, the phase that you're struggling with, and it will make you stronger in that phase. Um, this is, this could be a long project. Getting from the basic skills clinic to a full getup could be a project that's measured in years for you. It might be a project that doesn't ever get completed. That's okay. If you can get even just into the starting position for the getup, even into the floor press, maybe even up onto the elbow, you're already exploring a lot of motion that your body isn't subjected to on a daily basis in normal circumstances. So it's already gonna do something good for you. The get up is one of those exercises that's often in the strength and conditioning coaching world referred to as a desert island lift. It's the one thing you would do. You only had one exercise to do for the rest of your life. Uh, the get up would keep you fresh and ready to go uh, and very strong and very able bodied. So good luck. Don't worry about getting all the way through it, especially not initially. Get up to the elbow, get up to the tall sit, and get strong in those positions. And everyday life uh, won't be able to throw anything at you that you can't handle.